Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So today what I'm going to do, I'll talk about the personas from an experience cloud perspective. Now, you must be wondering why we need to talk about persona, right? Now, that's that's a pretty interesting question though, because uh, personas kind of impact your licensing model when it comes to experience cloud or, or for that matter, um, Salesforce normal license, right? Um, so you as a consultant or an admin or an architect, would have come across a scenario uh, in your implementation lifecycle that where customer is not aware of the personas. And that kind of uh, put us as a consultant or admin or an architect in a difficult position when it comes to recommending a licenses, number of licenses you need, right? Because now, okay, so let me take a step back, right? You must be thinking, okay, this guy talking about persona, but he, he didn't explain to us what personas is all about, right? So personas in simple terms, you categorize a group of user uh, which has certain functions or roles, right? For instance, um, you are a um, test user, right? Uh, so test users uh, usually perform end-to-end uh, -end testing, right? So let me write down here. So personas, let, let's uh, define a persona for an org. So we need test test users, right? Um, because who obviously will be involved in testing the functionality. Uh, we need a regular user, means a normal user, right? And we need, say, uh, a managers or, uh, okay, just for now, just keep it to, the, to these two, right? So this is, if you, if you look from a, a regular org, uh, persona perspective, right? I just categorize into very, very simple, very basic, or I would say very primitive personas here, right? Because I've categorized uh, users into two groups here. One is the regular user who will be interacting with your Salesforce org, or the test users who will be testing it, right? So obviously what that means is that the licensing model varies for both because the test users might need access to every single functionality available in the Salesforce org. And the regular user, right, could be uh, a minimalistic uh, user or an admin user. So based on that, the licensing model varies as well because not every user wants to perform every functionality. Let's say you might want to give access to, say, um, um, uh, say only the, the sales cloud aspect. You don't want it to give access to the... Uh, uh, to the service cloud. So uh, if you take a sales cloud example, right? Sales clouds, you know, you have accounts, you have different objects, right? Leads, opportunities, right? Now uh, you will have different personas there. One is the team leader, someone who looks after the sales agent and team leaders often have a, uh, will need access to your dashboard to create the report, to access to everything a user uh, does. Every, I mean, the sales agent, agents, does right will might need access to every um, record that's been created by the agents that belongs to the specific team leader right who reports to the team leader right sorry not belongs that's a kind of very bad terminology I used uh, so now I do understand that the record uh, record sharing comes into picture but just general from a you know persona perspective right so a team leader will have access to every record created by the sales agents that reports to the team leader. But when it comes to sales agent, sales agent will only have access to the record created by them, right? Um, so the persona kind of, uh, you know, defines how you implement a stuff in your org. Uh, I remember that one of the customers I work for, a pretty quite big, substantial, I would say, a government agency in New Zealand, they haven't defined the personas, right? And so it kind of made us made it very difficult how to define your org strategy, how to define your sharing models, right? If you don't have a personas defined, right? So you kind of have to rely on a very basic uh, sharing structure, like relying on permission sets, uh, permission set group, and then when the personas are kind of built, then you define your sharing rules and other kind of stuff, right? So that's one of the reason why you know personas are important. Now, how does it impact when it comes to experience cloud. Now experience cloud, when you think about experience cloud, you have a site user, someone who, you know, access the site, you know, to view the information. Maybe it's a knowledge article or maybe a compliance document or maybe something else, right? Um, 
so let me let me write it down here so when it's the site user this is experience cloud right and then a site admin uh, and then uh, someone who builds the site right a developer okay so now site admin uh, site site user is usually like I said right it's a user who logs into your experience cloud site um, and view the information so the licensing model varies okay a number of users wants to access it based on that you can determine what kind of license you need to assign or right and then admin is pretty you know the name itself you can infer from the name right someone who have access who controls the site right who actually uh, builds the strategy associated with the sites in terms of performance, uh, which user needs to see what, uh, what permissions it needs to assign to which user, that kind of stuff, right? And and site admin sometimes you know look after the licensing stuff as well. So um, this site admin could be one user, it could be you know a group of different users, right? So you can call it as a site admin persona where you're grouping a certain uh users to perform a certain task and roles right or respond on certain tasks sorry on certain responsibilities and perform certain tasks and developer is someone who builds your page layout or customize your experience layer uh, experience page uh, look and feel right add the functionality to it so you know the licensing model differs there as well so this is very important uh, from an overview perspective to understand why personas is important. Now, uh, once that is defined, right, it's always good to bring your users uh, to a meeting to explain to them, hey, these are the functionalities you will see because you belong to this group you and certain users belong to that group. So you may not have access to every functionality because what happens, right, say from a normal Salesforce perspective, right, so let's say if you don't have any persona defined, everyone can access every functionality, right? They can go to leads, they can go to opportunities, they can see everyone's record. Now, if you have a persona defined, right, and some users may not be able to see certain lead records or certain opportunity records. So you have to make it very clear when you have that meeting, right? To, because they belong to a certain group. And obviously when they belong to a certain group, and when, when you set up your org wide default settings or when you set up your uh, sharing rules, you obviously have to let them know that you can't see it because of so-and-so reason, right? So that's important, in my opinion, uh, to set up a persona before you you know start building pretty much everything, right? Experience Cloud uh, is pretty much the same, right, compared to a regular Salesforce org. The only difference is that, you know, an experience cloud, you're exposing to the outside world um, in the form of a website where the user can log onto it and view the data and do certain stuff, right? So, yeah, so it's very important to have your personas in place before you even start building uh, your experience cloud site. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to cover this. Uh, it may, may not be very important from an exam point of view, but from a real-life implementation perspective, I personally believe it makes a lot of difference. So that's pretty much I wanted to cover. Uh, this is a theory session. Uh, so I'm, my apologies, I've been a bit slower in making videos on Experience Cloud because I've been very busy with other stuff. It's an end of year, and as you know, the Hanukkah is coming. It's like, you know, just preparing. My family is preparing for Hanukkah. So, you know, as you know, I'm Jewish. So um, it's a big thing for us at the end of the year, like for Christians, you know, Christmas is there. So for us, it's Hanukkah. So, um, so I've been pretty busy with, uh, and plus I was busy with uh, sharing and visibility certification. And from a work point of view, uh, I've been pretty building a very big functionality for, for one of my customers. So it's taking was taking most of my time, and then um, I've been trying to you know build a deep learning code for for the nanotech where one of my mate who's a who's a nanotech architect he's building nanotech stuff and i'm helping him with the deep learning which is a, that's one of the companies right if you know that mavit ai solutions what uh, i founded with my mate uh so it's keeping me very extremely busy but like i said right that's not really excuse i'm not trying to make up an excuse just to say hey i can't do this because i'm just you know let you guys uh I just wanted to let you guys know that the reason why, you know, things got delayed on this space, right? But I'll make sure that I'll try to 
finish this certification series uh, before the end of this year. So, yeah. So that being said, uh, thank you very much for watching this episode. You guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.